What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2006 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. Up front is a 6.6 .6 liter turbocharged diesel V8 and down below is a six speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Silverado because this is an LBZ, meaning it has the good engine, the good transmission, and I'll explain what all of that means in a little bit. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack or big friggin' bottle sticker, both with free shipping. You could also submit your own vehicles to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 6.6 .6 liter turbo V8 that is diesel. Well, in the early 2000s, Chevy Duramax offered the LB7 and then the LLY diesel V8s. Now these engines were fine. They did the job, they were Duramaxes. But then in 2006, they changed a couple of things, creating the LBZ engine. And what Chevy and Duramax ended up doing was striking gold. The LBZ had stronger rods. It had a better fuel delivery system from Bosch. The turbo inlets were widened, increasing the flow. Now power went down a little bit, but reliability went way up. And it still made 360 horsepower and 650 foot pounds of torque, which is insane. However, the biggest thing about the engine is that it didn't have the emissions restraints that would later come in 2008 and onward. So the LBZ was only offered for two years, the 2006 and 2007 model years of the Silverado slash Sierra. So it was only offered for two years, but it's kind of the king of the castle when it comes to Duramax V8s. So that makes these trucks incredibly sought after because they are so reliable. Not only that, but this was the first Duramax to be paired to the six-speed Allison transmission. It's an automatic transmission, but it can hold a lot more power. There's a lot better built of a transmission. Previously, the diesel Silverado and Sierras would get a five-speed automatic, which just didn't quite cut the mustard. So that awesome, reliable, fantastic LBZ engine paired with this new at the time, solid, reliable transmission, this is the truck that you want. This is the diesel that you want. And so that's why these trucks have such a cult following. That's why people charge almost MSRP 15 years later. And even this truck with 226,000 miles is a fantastic example. It still runs fantastic. It does the job, it gets its hands dirty, and I love that. Last but not least, of course, this here 2500 HD is four wheel drive. It does have locking hubs, which is fantastic, and we'll talk about how to set that a little bit later on. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. On the far left is my transmission temperature, then I have my tachometer, speedometer in the center, and then I have my oil pressure, battery voltage, fuel, and coolant temperature off to the right. On the steering wheel, I don't get anything besides the horn and airbag. And then off to the left, I have my headlight switches, gauge dimmer switches, and my dome light on and off, which I quite like. Moving onto the door, I do have my lock and unlock, and then I have my crank windows. This is a very, very work truck truck. It was ordered specifically for a job, specifically for my friend's job. And so it has the rubberized floor matting, manual windows, and not many creature comforts. However, let's move into the center. We do have a handful of creature comforts. This is not the stock radio. However, this is where the radio would go. Not surprising. And then I do have the climate controls. I get dual zone climate, which is very, very nice to see in a 2006 pickup truck, let alone something as basic as this. And of course I have my fan speed, where to send it, all the goodies like that. And I am definitely using that today in the California heat. I also have two 12 volt outlets slash cigarette lighters and an ashtray, a little cubby, and that's pretty much it for the center console. Now, I do have cup holders attached to the bottom of the bench seat up front, so we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 2006 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD, and I am happy to announce that it passes. This isn't a huge surprise, since I recently drove a 2003 and it also passed, but always nice to see that I could bring my big water bottle with me out to the job site. Then of course we do have the bench seat, 
very, very minimalist, very basic. They don't have much size or shape to them. They look like they could have been pulled out of any car that's ever existed in the history of the world. However, they're comfortable enough and they're doing the job today. With that being said, we don't have back seats. However, let's go talk about the bed. This is a custom bed put on the back. So let's talk about some of its features. All right, so we're on the back of the 2500 HD Silverado. And this truck was ordered as a cab and chassis, and so this was actually added on later. You could go to plenty of different companies and get different backs. We'll just take a quick walk around this particular one. We have a bunch of storage options all around that do lock, as well as these bars that can swing around and offer some rack space. This one actually swings this way and goes across the back. And then that front one, you can see the little cables on it. You could actually move and put there in the center. However, you could also change it and put it back. Paul, the owner, actually designed that roof rack, which is really, really cool. This is how the truck looks. Obviously, very much work truck E, and I won't get into too many specifics of this bed, but something really, really cool and unique about the Silverado 2500 HDs is that you can get them just as a chassis and toss whatever you want on the back. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and there is something about this generation of Silverado that I really love. Silverado, Suburban, Tahoe, Sierra, Yukon, all of those same chassis vehicles from this era. I love the look of them. They were designed by Wayne Cherry, one of my favorite car designers. And so overall, I'm really, really happy with it. But now let's get on to my final thoughts here on the LBZ Duramax Silverado from 2006. Well, this is the truck. This is the Chevy to get. It's an unrestricted engine. This is like driving a muscle car pre-1973, before the oil crisis, when they actually made big power. And then emissions and the government, like everything else in this country, tend to step in and ruin things. And thus the diesels after 2007, from 2007 and a half on, were strangled, restricted, cut off. And in some markets, completely executed. And so for my gamers out there, I wanna draw a comparison. My favorite video game franchise growing up was Halo. Halo 1 was really good. Halo 2 was even better. And Halo 3 was one of the best video games to ever grace any console. It was fantastic. It was fun to play. The campaign was this epic conclusion to a three game series. It wrapped up the storylines. It gave me peace at night, knowing what happened to the Master Chief and the Arbiter. Multiplayer was a ton of fun. It was customizable enough, but not too customizable where it almost didn't make it fun. You were able to change your armor and earn armor through grinding and playing the game through and through. That is the LBZ. That's the peak. That's the pinnacle. That's not to say that other Halo games didn't come later. They made Halo Reach. Halo 4, Halo 5, but the magic was kind of gone for me. They jumped the shark. Yeah, those games were fine and I played them and modern diesels are fine, I've driven them, I like them, they're good. But everything with the LBZ just happened at the right time. The Allison transmission came around and was really something special. It was pre-emissions, but we had the technology enough to make it something solid. Much like, again, Halo 3 came around when I was in junior high, when I had a bunch of time on my hands to enjoy it and play it. I was young enough to have fun, but old enough to understand the concepts. That was a golden era, and this is a golden era of Silverado. This is a golden era of Duramax golden era of diesels. And so that is why this truck is so sought after. This really is the peak pinnacle Duramax. And whenever talking about Duramaxes after this, I'll always look to this one as the shining light in the night, like a Waffle House off the freeway or a bathroom after Taco Tuesday. That's what this truck was. That's what this truck is. And that's what this truck is going to continue to be. These things run forever. They do have one small issue, the water pump. The impeller is actually made out of plastic and sometimes they break and you'll need to replace the water pump. However, the water pumps tend to last 150 to 200,000 miles. So not too shabby. Huge thank you to my good friend, Paul, for letting me take out his LBZ. I will link Paul's YouTube channel in the description below. He specializes in Ford Model A's from 1928 to 1931. He is super, super cool. We've done a couple of videos together. He's a very good friend of mine, so please go check it out. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.